Today we're going to start section 14.3, which is the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, and equation in a circle. Uh, we won't get to all those things, obviously, but we're going to get started on them. So to begin with, we're going to look at the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says the following. If we have a right triangle, that's important that it's a right triangle, and it has legs of lengths A and B, and a hypotenuse of length C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay? Hundreds of proofs of this theorem. Um, in fact, we actually have a previous president of the United States who created a proof, President Garfield. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you a couple of the different diagrams that people associate with those proofs. I'm not proving it to you. Um, the top right one is the most common one people see drawn where you see the squares drawn on the sides of the triangle. So the a squared square here is equal, or sorry, plus the b squared square. That, dis, that, that area contained inside of those is equivalent to the area contained inside the c squared. They, they're equal to one another. Um, you can actually see some pretty nice pictures of things broken apart here. So for example, I said I'm not gonna prove it to you, but then I wanna talk just a little bit about it. This piece right here is a plus B, right? And this piece right here is A plus B and so forth all the way around. So this is A squared plus B squared. But if you take a look at it, we actually have the diagonals present in there where the C squareds as well. I like the last picture maybe the best um, because you can actually see the sides. So here's A and here's B and here's C. So the blue rectangle in the middle is very obviously C squared, right? Because we've got these two here. I'm not gonna justify it to you, but these are in fact right angles. So that can be proven. They are really gonna work. So I have C squared in the middle here, and then I have A squared plus B squared if I actually break things apart differently. So different proofs, Neither none of these are actually President Garfield's proof either. Um, if I remember right, he does something with a trapezoid or something like that to prove his, which is different. Um, but lots and lots and lots of proofs about this. We're going to focus on using these for problems, of course. So we're going to take a look at this diagram. How many right triangles do you see in this picture? There are three. Um, there's the big outer one because it's marked at the top that there's a right angle. And you have the smaller ones on the left and on the right because they're marked at the bottom as right angles. Is everybody good with that? All right, so taking a look at that information, we are going to find the side lengths y and x. But in order to do that, when we're talking about any kind of a formula, we have to use something where we know everything but one variable. For example, if you tried to find the length y right here, right? It's a leg of a triangle. And you said, well, I'll just use the left-hand rectangle. You're going to find yourself short on information to do that at the moment. Why? We don't know the other side, right? We only know one of those three side lengths that I just highlighted in red. That won't work. But there is a triangle that we know two pieces of the information for. Which one is it? Allison, the big one, right. If you take a look at this larger triangle, I know two of those three pieces of information. So tell me, what do you see? What are legs? What's the hypotenuse? Let's start with, what is the hypotenuse? What is the C in this particular big triangle? It's the X on bottom. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. And the right angle in this particular triangle is right up here at the top. Oh my goodness, that was really thick. Let's try that again. Extremes today, I'm going with extremes. How about that? There we go. So there's my right angle, and opposite it is the x. That means that the other two sides that I actually know, the four and the four square root three, are the a and the b, and it doesn't matter which one's which. So you can just put them in either location. So here's four squared, and then here's four squared to three squared. Let's start with the four squared. What is four squared? 16. Nobody wanted to say it's a game you played in elementary school? No, okay, that's good. 
Um, the four square root of three squared means that you've got to apply the square root or the square to each piece of it. So it's four squared and it's square root of three squared. So what is the four squared? We already said that, that's 16. And then what's square root of three squared? Three. So we actually get 16 times three. Maybe you don't need to see that much work to know what I meant by that, that's fine. But I wanted to make sure everybody could see it well first. Now what is 16 times three? 48 is right, yes. And then we have 48 plus 16, which is what? 64. And how would I find x? You take a square root and you actually know the square root of this particular value. What's the square root of 64? It's 8. And there's no units on this one, so I'm just going to go with x equal 8. Now, in my diagram, x is, equal, well it's not x, it was, yeah it was x, yeah, x at the bottom. x equal to 8, unfortunately, doesn't actually give me either of the other two sides of the smaller triangles, right? I mean, I don't know how the 8 is broken up. Is it broken up into like 6 and 2? Uh, or like 5 and 3? I don't have that information. Does everybody see that first? Okay. So breaking up the eight without the information of knowing angle measures or something like that is not going to work here. I gotta do something different. On this particular one, there's actually something that's really nice that we've done before. Does anybody see it? A way to do this problem. We are gonna be able to put it to a proportion. Any idea why, Rachel? Yeah, that's really good. Do you see all the right triangles? I mean, we, we talked about them, right? Right? Lots of rights. Okay. Right triangles everywhere. There's lots of right triangles. Not only that, but the right triangles we have share some angles. So let me give you an example of one. We've got the big outside triangle, which is useful because we know all of its side lengths. So we obviously like that triangle. And we have, let's go with, which one did I use? I used the one on the left, I think. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but this one right here. If I take the big outside triangle and I take the triangle that I just drew in, they both have a 90 degree angle and they share that angle as well, correct? So whatever that angle is, it's the same value in both triangles. So let me actually draw the two triangles out because sometimes it's helpful to sort of take the images apart, I know it is for me, when I'm thinking about them so that I can compare them. So we have the big outside triangle here. That's the first one I drew. And then now we have this little one over here like this. Let me get my 98 degree angles marked. Here's the 90, here's the 90. I have eight, four square root of three, and I have four. And I, I don't have the eight, but I have the four square root of three right here. That's what I actually know so far. And also know that this angle is the same as this one. The angles? And Y equals that. Oh, like the name for it? Sure. Yes. Yeah, that works. Appreciate that, yes. It's an unknown value, but it's the one I'm looking for. You're bet. You're right. Okay, so is everybody good with the fact that we know two of our angles and they match? the 90 degree one and the one that's the exact same angle. What does that tell me about the third angle in my triangle? The triangles are similar because what is the third? The triangles are similar because I have angle, angle, right? And I actually can also talk about the fact that that third angle matches, right? Because I've got two angles, but angle, angle is enough. You're right. So I've got similar triangles here. Now, there was a test problem where you guys had similar triangles by angle angle and some of you redrew them and restructured them so that they matched and all that good stuff. Um, this particular diagram, while it's correct, might be drawn in a way that's very difficult to sort of compare because while the angles that match on the left-hand side match, one of them has the 90 degree angle at the top of the picture and the other one has the 90 degree angle at the bottom of the picture. 
Does everybody make sense with me on that? So it might be helpful to take this diagram, I'll do that one, and to redo the order of things. Um, and maybe, maybe it would be helpful to label the sides so that I can, or the angle, uh, the vertices, so that I can make sure I get them in the right order. So here's A, here's B, here's C, and then here's uh, A as well, because it's the same A. Here's the point B at the top. Actually, let me use the different letters. I think that might be easier. D, E, F. I know some of the points match, but just so I can get the reference. So A, B, C, I'm going to leave the same. I'm not going to manipulate it, but I'm going to manipulate triangle D, E, F. So if I take D, E, F and I redraw it, I still want the D to be in the same location. Everybody agree with me on that? I mean, like, you're good with that? Because I, I, don't, I don't want the angle that matches to move, and those two already match. But I do want the 90-degree angle here at the top instead of at the bottom, and that 90-degree angle is what I called E. So basically, visually speaking, E and F are changing places. Where does the 4 squared of 3 go then? At the bottom, because the 4 squared of the root of 3 is actually the side DF. So the side DF is now at the bottom, so that's 4 squared of 3 here. And the Y is side EF, so that's over here. Because I have all that set up now, which I need to shrink because I'm running out of space. Whoops. Those of you who've done presentations with me before know that I tell you not to erase things. And then I just erased a whole bunch of stuff here, which is causing me problems on selecting things. Um, let's do it this way. I didn't erase anything on the left. Okay, so I'm going to set up a proportion like Rachel suggested when we were first discussing this. The proportion has to take the sides that match. So can you tell me two sides that you know, like that you already have the numerical values for, that match up? Yep, this 8 and this 4 squared 3. Those match up. So I'm going to put the 8 on the top of my proportion, just because it's the top picture on my screen, and the 4 squared of 3 on the bottom. Now, y is what I'm looking for, correct? Correct. And y is over here. So what side length matches up with y? 4. So I need these to go into the proportion on the other side, but make sure, again, in the right order. My top of my fraction here was the triangle that's on the top of my screen, so that's my 4. And the bottom is the second for triangle on my screen, which is y. And then I will be able to cross multiply to find the value for y. So I have 8y equals 16 square root of 3, I think. Is that right? And then what would I do? Divide by 8. What is y? 2 square root of 3. All right, we're going to list one more fact, and then we will pause for today. Another item about the Pythagorean theorem valuable to remember is it's also true that if triangle ABC is a triangle with side lengths A, B, C, such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then triangle ABC is a right triangle with the right angle opposite side C. Now, you might be reading that and say, but that's what I already wrote down at the top of my paper. It almost is, but it's in the other order. At the top of your paper, we said, if you have a right triangle, right, that's the given information, then you know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This says, if I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then I have a right triangle. And things don't always work that way, right? For those of you who've taken um, number theory before, we do a, um, I do a video from VeggieTales, the monkey and ape video. Some of you are like, yeah, I know what she's talking oh, about, right? If you know it has a tail, it's a monkey. If it doesn't have a tail, then it's an ape. And he starts talking about cows and kites and tomatoes not having tails. So we're having tails, so they're monkeys. It doesn't work. So you can't always do that in both directions, okay? This directional 
description here is unique to certain facts, and it, and it works for this one. All right, we'll pick up next time right there.